What's going on, family? I'm Scrapbook Boxing. The Museum of the Forgotten Fisticuff series will continue its conversation with you concerning the complete history of boxing. On July 31st, 1915, Les Darcy knocks out Eddie McCarthy in 15 rounds in Sydney, Australia. He will remain the Australian recognition of middleweight championship honors. He'd be in a ring with a fighter by the name of Eddie McCarthy. Now, who was Eddie McCarthy? His name was Edward McCarthy. He was born July 31st, 1889 in Eureka, Wisconsin. He would die on November 2nd, 1929 in Wisconsin as well, standing 5 foot 10 and a half inches with a 73 inch reach. He was a middleweight who fought from 1900 to 1922. He had a total bout career of 96 fights, 66 wins, 18 losses, and 44 knockouts. He was stopped seven times. Being in the ring with fighters such as George Chip, Mike Gibbons, Bombalia Billy Wales, Harry Greb, Buck Krause, Sergeant J. Black, Jeff Smith, Frank Klaus, Bud Gorman, and Chuck Wiggins. Fantastic resume Eddie McCarthy would have. Now we'll take a look at some of Eddie McCarthy's opponents. Here you're looking at Harry Greb. His name was the Pittsburgh Windmill. He became the middleweight champion of the world in 1923 when he would defeat Johnny Wilson. He became the America's light heavyweight champion of the world when he would defeat Gene Tunney. I'm going to keep this focus here for you. In 1922, this is how he grabbed the Pittsburgh windmill. Now, another opponent of Eddie McCarthy was George Chip. He was a middleweight champion of the world when he defeated Frank Klaus. He had a brother by the name of Joe Chip. Joe Chip would knock out Harry Greb. And Harry Greb didn't know it would hit him. George Chip. And here's the man himself, Eddie McCarthy. Very good fighter was Eddie McCarthy. He was out of Wisconsin. Now, August 31st, 1915, Ted Kitt Lewis defeats Jack Britton in 12 rounds. The contest took place at the Atlas Athletic Club in Boston, Massachusetts. It would be their second bout of 20. On September 10th, 1915, Johnny Erto defeats Kid Williams on a foul in five rounds. The contest took place in St. Paul's. It was not recognized. Now, Kid Williams, who was he? His name was Jonathan Kutenko. He was born December 5th, 1893 in Denmark. He would die October 18th, 1963. He was 69 years of age at the time of his death and he would reside in Baltimore, Maryland. Now he was from Ukraine. He was Polish and Danish known as the Baltimore Tiger. He stood five foot one inches as bantamweight and fought from 1910 to 1929. He had a total bout career of 130 bouts. 30 wins, I'm sorry, 100 wins, 19 losses, 50 knockouts, and he was stopped five times himself with eight draws. He won the IBU Bantamweight Championship crown. 20-year-old Eddie Campy, Saturday, January 31st, 1914, 12-round knockout. Both men weighed in at 116 pounds. He would knock out 25-year-old Johnny Colin. June 9th, 1914, in three rounds. The contest took place at the Vernon Arena. Referee with Charles Eitan. He would become the world bantamweight champion of the world. He defeats 18-year-old Pete Herman. Now, Pete Herman's from New Orleans. He fought him at the Pelican Stadium in New Orleans. Now, Pete Herman was an outstanding fighter. But Pete Herman would eventually become a champion. 28-year-old Eddie Wallace, Brooklyn Broadway Arena, would also be a victim of Kid Williams' attack. He would lose to Johnny Kilbane, March 17, 1915. Johnny Kilbane, was a, he was a fantastic fighter. Let's take a look at Johnny Kilbane. Now here you have Johnny Kilbane of Cleveland, Ohio. He would become a champion. Very good fighter was Johnny Kilbane. Now we're taking a look at Frank Mattel. He was a welterweight out of Boston, Massachusetts. I want to show you Frank Mattel.
Tommy Phelps out of Brooklyn, New York. One hundred pounder. Tommy Feltz from Brooklyn, New York. Now I just pulled out a scrapbook of Johnny Kilbane. This entire book is Johnny Kilbane, 1,000 pages, 2,000 front and back. This is Johnny Kilbane and he loses his title to Eugene Creaky. Eugene Creaky of France. Won the World Featherweight Championship title. So let's see if you can see this here. Johnny Kilbane. So boxer defeats Johnny Kilbane of Cleveland, Ohio. June 2nd at the Polo Grounds. Now I pulled out another book. Of Johnny Dundee. Now let's see this particular fight with Johnny Dundee. By the way, here's the combatants here. Eugene Creaky is to your left. And Jake Kil um, Johnny Kilbane is to your right, excuse me. Eugene Creaky of France is to your left. Johnny Kilbane of Cleveland, Ohio is to your right. Feather title goes to France. Creaky knocks out Kilbane in six rounds. And this was an upset to be shared in conversation with many. You see Kilbane parting the word of promise to Pepper Martin. Now, just to show you this article once again, Kilbane's parting word, a promise to Pepper Martin. Now, Pepper Martin, I'm going to show you Pepper Martin. Once again, this is Johnny, Johnny Kilbane of Cleveland, Ohio. And this is Vincent Pepper Martin. Of Brooklyn, New York. What I'm doing is showing you my boxing cards as the images to some of these fighters. Vincent Pepper Martin and Johnny Kilbane. Now I just pulled out the Johnny Dundee Scott Swap scrapbook once again, 1,000 pages, 2,000 front and back. This entire book is Johnny Dundee. Now if you remember, I showed you the other book, Johnny Kilbane. And he was knocked out by Eugene Creek of France. Here you have Johnny Dundee, who wins the featherweight championship crown from Eugene Creek. So as we go down a linear line, we can see the changes of the belts. Johnny Dundee cuts Creek to ribbons. Winning World Featherweight Championship crown. Masters Gallant Frenchman in 15 rounds. By great display of boxing and hitting. Gains life ambition after 10 years. What they're talking about. Johnny Dundee. Fort Kilbane. And... They robbed Johnny Dundee. And for 10 years, Kilbane would not give him another chance. So it took Creaky to defeat Kilbane. And Dundee would defeat Creaky. This is Eugene Creaky. Now Johnny Dundee, who is the Scotch Wild, will be the brand new featherweight champion of the world. Creaky is to your left and Dundee is to your right. They're on the scales. 
This was 1923. They were about to get it on. Now, when I bring out the boxing cards, anyone who collects cards knows you got to be very careful when you take them out of the sleeve that the corners don't damage. So, you know, all that I do here to try to make sure you get some good visuals, that's why I ask you. I mean, I don't even ask you to push the like button or give me comments, but that's the courtesy that you can give me by doing so. Let me show you some more pages before I put this Johnny Dundee book back. These books are very heavy, and I have to be very careful with them. I have the full-size picture of this one with Johnny Dundee. So once again, Eugene Creaky and Johnny Dundee. What a fight this was. Eugene Creaky was a tough fighter. That he was. So this is the larger picture that I just showed you of Johnny Dundee in the mirror of shadow boxing. Getting prepared for about when I'm going to fight it with Johnny Dundee. Scott Schwab. I have him number nine collective with Benny Leonard and Tony Canzanelli. Number nine, greatest fighters in boxing history. Here's Tony Canzanelli. Now, before I put this book back of Johnny Dundee, Dundee even scored with Charlie White. Now, we talked about Charlie White. He was from Chicago. Very good fighter. He could punch. Along with Ray Miller, both of those fighters from Chicago could fight. Here you have Johnny Dundee. Close knockout. So Sid Terrace has Dundee close to a knockout in 15 rounds. Sid Terrace was a very good Jewish fighter. He knocked out Ruby Goldstein in one round in the polo grounds. He was another phenomenal fighter, was Sid Terrace. Yeah, Bernstein is awarded verdict over Johnny Dundee. That's when Johnny Dundee was towards the end of his career. I'll tell you something about Johnny Dundee, the Scotch Wap. I'm not even really going through these articles. I'm just showing you, scanning through this book here. Right, let me show you another page. I don't know why this lighting is so dull. Dundee defaults bouts in Paris and stirs up trouble. There are so many articles of Dundee's life, his fights, and his book. Dundee boxes rings around Vincent Pepper Martin. I showed you Pepper Martin. He's from Brooklyn, New York. Dundee loses bout to Terrace as tap sounds for Garden. Once again, that's Sid Terrace. And again, this is towards the end of Johnny Dundee's career. All right, so that's enough of Johnny Dundee's book. There's so much information of Johnny Dundee in here. A lot of newspaper articles. When a Scotch Wap failed. Again, this is towards the end of Johnny Dundee's career. He's to your right. With Red Chapman. Red Chapman was another fighter during those days. He had a lot of fighters during those days. All right, this is Scrapbook Boxing Museum of the Forgotten Fistical Series. I just wanted to give you a glimpse of Johnny Dundee. We hadn't even really talked about him yet. But what he used to do, he used to put his bottom, his foot on the bottom rope on the outside. And he would hook his foot and he would dance on those ropes. He knew how to parry he knew how to shoulder roll. He could hook off the ropes. So he danced on the ropes. Anyone knows about Johnny Dundee, they would tell you that. 
who's a fascinating rope dancer. He knew how to play the ropes. All right, thanks for listening. This is Scrapbook Boxing Museum of the Forgotten Fisticuffs Series. All great fights, all great fighters never be forgotten on my channel. The complete history of boxing. We'll see you again. Thanks for watching. Peace. All right, so thanks again. I'm not sure if I had the camera upside down. Thanks again. I'm Scrapbook Boxing. Uh, this is Johnny Dundee and Eugene Creaky. Maybe next time I'll show you some of the boxing cards. I did a video on a few of them. You have to look back and find that video. But I have over at least 2,000 boxing cards, probably more, of fighters from the 1800s all the way to like the 1990s, I guess. But I have... Uh, I hadn't shown a lot of the cards. I showed a few cards. I don't remember how many they were on a previous video. But I have them in boxes, boxes and boxes of boxing cards. All of the great fighters from the past. I have cards that's out of print with Holman Williams, with Harry Smith, the Harlem Thunderbolt. Those are all cabinet cards. I have uh, all the Black Murders Row on cards. They only made a few of those. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to show, but continue to support what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to just educate you and give you some interesting visuals as I speak about the game of boxing. Once again, I've been involved in this since I was seven years old. My dad basically got me involved in it and taught me a great deal. He knew a lot about boxing. He had a lot of memorabilia. And together, we collected a great deal of memorabilia. We used to travel all the way to Connecticut, South Carolina, Virginia, uh, California. We went all over collecting memorabilia. I used to go to the nursing homes and I visit the fighters, fighters such as Charlie Burley and Oh, Jimmy Bivens, I used to see all of those fighters as I was a young man. I met Archie Moore. I met uh, so many fighters, so many of them. And I'll talk more about that as the series goes by. Uh, I saw Ezra Charles before he passed away. I was a young kid. He passed away in 1975. They were doing a benefit on him. He was in a wheelchair. He had his belt. And... Uh, shortly after he died. But I didn't know who Ezra Charles was. I was too young. I couldn't appreciate him like I appreciate him now, obviously. And, and I wish I really knew more about who Ezra Charles was when I saw him. I just saw a guy, everybody was around him, and he had a belt wrapped around his shoulder. He had uh, Lou Gehrig's disease. But then, uh, thanks again for watching. I'm Scrapbook Boxing. I'm rambling here. Museum of the Forgotten Fisticuffs series. All great fights, all great fighters. Will never be forgotten on my channel. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.